semeni wa wa it is quite exciting to be here to be before you today to bring the word of god I was in the first service and I was seated some place then I was being reminded that uh, God still believes in physical address physical address but at times when he comes where he expects us to be, to be he doesn't find us or we are there but we are just half hearted so we are as good as not there and that's why we came today so that that god who knows that we may not be in the very physical address he expects us to be or we are there half heartedly he will speak to us today amen he will speak to us today thank you bishop for this opportunity to bring the word i honor you man of god Thank you, Pastor is in absentia, the pastoral team, and indeed uh, all of us who came, you came to be blessed. Because you came, indeed there's a blessing for you. Uh, in our midst, there is Ross, my wife. Uh, she's seated somewhere there. And uh, yeah, we've been with Ross for 32 years plus now. Um, and uh, we have the other girl in our house. She's Amy. Amy is there. Amy is our third born. I think uh, I don't know unless I was told. I was not told that could be. The immediate family that there is in this house today so we go to the word probably before let me just give you the heading or the topic so that we write down and then we can read the word together the topic today is return on first level basis because I'm also a teacher. I want to give you time so that you write. Return on first level basis to your place of submission and service. You can also say or ministry. Return on first level basis to your place of submission and service or ministry you know even the, the topic itself can speak to us so that's why I would repeat as many times return on first level basis so this is not just the normal return on first level basis to your place of submission and service or ministry for that matter the scripture comes from Genesis 16, and Genesis 16 has 16 verses, so we shall read all of them. So Genesis chapter 16, 1 to 16, well, one ch chapter that many people avoid. I don't know why God gave me this one. So I read. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maid servant whose name was Hagar. 
So Sarai said to Abram, See now the Lord has trained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of, Abra of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. After Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave you my maid into your embrace, and when she saw she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord charged between you and me. So Abraham said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Abraham dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shua. I want you to underline that. On the way to Shua. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for a multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His son shall be against every man, and every man is hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then he, she called the name of the Lord who, had, who spoke to her. You are the Lord who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Probably that's something you would also want to look at. Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore the well was called Bia, the high roy. Observe, it's between Kadesh and Beret. So Agar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abraham. Let's pray. Father, that is your word. We pray that you speak to us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Uh, when uh, I got this uh, message, it stabbed me a little. But I knew since it had come from the Bible, I, was, I didn't have much issues. So I gave it all. Actually, I've been looking at this message for about two months now. From the last time when we shared here that behold, the hour is coming and the hour is now. From that time, I've only been looking at this message. But from the text that we've read, you'll note something that Sarai was so obsessed with obtaining children and she was willing to go to any length. She was willing to go to any length. And she took advantage of her position as a wife and passed over that obsession to Abraham, the husband. 
So the double possession of getting children took the first place of God in the lives of Abram and his wife, Sarai. Obsession of this nature can also be looked at as drunkenness. So drunkenness is not necessarily drunk on, uh, on alcohol, cigarette, and that. Anything that we do in excess, that can be seen as drunkenness. Because such kind of things are driven by selfish ambitions where it's me, myself, and I. The moment the household was now captured by me, myself, and I, they started walking in the flesh. And when you walk in the flesh, the chances that you'll get deeper are higher unless God helps you. The moment Abraham accepted to go to have sexual intercourse with Haggai, it simply meant that he had actually hooked up with Egypt and that became idolatry in itself, apart from sexual immorality that had been committed. And where idolatry exists, you will never miss witchcraft or sorcery or magic. Those things go together. But of course, things happened and Hagar became pregnant. And she realized that she had succeeded where the old lady had failed for a long time. And she was caught into and she was caught up by pride. That's why in the text she, she said she looked, she, she looked at, at, uh, at, 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 her, at her mistress, Sarai, in a despised manner. Pride. Because you've succeeded where probably the old hand had, has failed for a long time. Pride catching up with us. When that happened, there was hatred in the family. There were contestations, jealousies, dissensions. And when you are talking about that, you are talking about the, 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 the works of the flesh which Paul dwells about dwells so much on in Ecclesians 5 19 21 but of course Sarai had the last laugh because she still the advantage that she had, she had of access to Abraham she used it properly and then she mistreated she was given a go ahead by Abraham, mistreated Haggai, who fled from her presence, from the what we saw. And the mo when she fled her presence, there is a path that she took. She was on the way of Shua. The way of Shua, we shall look at that shortly. It's like the moment she took onto the way of sure, she had run from her first, her first labor relationship with Sarai, her mistress. Even when Jonah decided to take to go to Tashish, he had run away from his first labor relationship with God. When Simon Peter led a group of seven back to fishing, he had run away 
from his first relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's go back to Hagar, who had now chosen the way of Shua. If one looks at Exodus 15, 22 to 24, we see a number of things or a number of characteristics about the way of Shua or the wilderness of Shua. One, you will realize that in the wilderness of Shua, there was no water. There was no water. And indeed, there was no physical water. But water, in the spiritual sense, also stands in for the presence of God. In other words, in the will, on the way of Shua, where there is no water, no physical water, where there is no presence of God. Therefore, the way of Shua is a way of thirstiness. Thirstiness, you would say. Then, when you look at that also, the wilderness of Shua, there was what we call bitter waters. So that begins to speak to us. It speaks bitterness. It speaks resentment. It speaks unforgiveness. In 24, the people started complaining. So the way of Shua is a way of complaining, is a way of murmuring, is a way of finger pointing, is a way of charging and condemning others. The way of Shua. But we thank God that the angel of the Lord showed up by the spring where Hagar was and instead of the way of Shua, he showed her the way of the Lord. One as few. You realize a few of us, of course many of us, we, when we are looking at Exodus 33 from 12 to 23, we so much talk about unless your presence goes with us. That's what we concentrate on. But we forget that there were two prayers that Moses made. The first prayer he did was, I pray, show me your way that I may know you and find grace in your sight. So it's like everything rotates around the way of God. Once you know the way of God, the rest is history. I recall from the first service when Reverend uh, Mugo was sharing, and he said there are some people who have made it here. The people who have made it here must have known the way of the Lord. They must have prayed to be shown the way of the Lord. And the next thing he said is, show me your glory. He said, show me your glory. So it's only God who came in and said, my presence will go with you before the discussions. But he only asked for two things. Show me your way. Show me your glory. And here is Hagar now. The angel has stepped in and now he's Say is, is stepping in to say, forget about the way of Shua, the way of thirstiness, the way of bitterness, the way of complaining, and take on to the way of the Lord. And the way of the Lord was in the statement, return to your mistress. And submit yourself under her hand. And that's where our topic came from. Return 
on first level basis to your place of submission no to your place of service and submission submission and service i think submission and service sorry for that so that was the way of the lord and even if now i stopped here i've already shown you the way of the lord <laughs> I've already shown us the way of the, the Lord. He wants us to return and submit under the hand. But now I will give you other relationships that will, you will now see where we are. We have four parallel relationships to the one of Haga Sarai relationships relationships sorry we have four parallel relationships we find the first one in ephesians ephesians 5:24 ephesians 5:24 and the relationship we find there is G church christ relationship church jesus christ relationship and i would want to read that one therefore just as the church is subject to christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything but what we are picking here is the church is subject to christ that is the first relationship that we see so if we tie to the to the Haka story, the church in her pride has fled from her first level relationship with Jesus Christ and is walking the way of sure. The way of sure, thirstiness, bitterness, and complaining. So the church. And I'm sure people are wondering now, who is the church? When you look at 1 Corinthians 12, 27, you will see there, I may not want to read that one, that the, the church is the body of Christ. Therefore, the body of believers, believers, you and me, we are the church. So it's you and me who has fled from the presence of Jesus Christ. The question I pose there when you read Second First Corinthians twelve twenty seven is it talks of like you you are an individual member. So Ami is an individual member. Rose is an individual member. I'm an individual member. So, so I'm held accountable as an individual. So the question is, are you individually a member of the body of Christ on first level basis? Now you are first level ni hile, yani na nikiona pastors, na weka pastor kitoka na sema, millicent. That is, and then she calls me Charlie. Not, not Charles, Charlie. Then that is first level relationship. First level, first level relationship. So it's like the church in her pride has run away from that first level relationship with Jesus Christ. And we are walking the way of sure. The next definition of church. You find that in Ephesians 4:11, 1 Corinthians 12:28, and Romans 12:8. I know you want to. I know prayers are there, so I will repeat that. Ephesians 4:11, 2 Corinthians 12:28, and Romans 12:8. And here we see. The church is supposed to be for those who serve as the apostles, now our bishop, 
the prophets, I believe they should be in the house, the teachers, the evangelists, the pastors or priests, and I'm sure we are many there. And then as well as those who serve elsewhere, those who serve in helping, encouraging, giving, administering, showing mercy. So when all those, the church is supposed to be of people who serve. Who serve. So the question is, do you know your area of service? And do you give it on first level basis? The issue, the catch word here is first level basis. Come on, atoa nusu nusu. There we, that's, that's why this message is coming today. So the, the third definition of church comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. And there where we find the nine spiritual gifts. The nine spiritual gifts to profit all. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. So once you've picked 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, you'll be able to get that. Now the question that comes forth is, what is your spiritual gift and then do you use it for the profit of all on the first level basis number four we find that another definition in Galatians 5.22 where we sing it uh, overhead, like us who teach Sunday school, we can sing it. We start love, joy, peace. So, it's the marks of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is the fruit of the Spirit. The church is like people should look at you as you serve. We should see this coming out of you or coming out of myself. So the question is, do we manifest the fruit of the spirit in service on a first level basis? So that is insofar as the church is concerned. When we look at Romans 13, Romans 13, I will just pick something small there. Romans 13, 1 to 6, Titus 3, 1, and 1 Peter 2, 13 to 17, we see another parallel relationship, and we see this one, citizens governing authorities relationship. Citizens governing authorities relationship. Let me see uh, oh, anybody who is a Kenyan here. Anybody who is a Kenyan here by show of hand. Thank you very much. So, so we are all Kenyans. We are all citizens of this country. And here we are. So we see uh, let, I want us to pick Romans 13 verse 1 only. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Uh -huh. So now, let every soul, let every person in this place be subject to the governing authorities but the opposite has happened the citizens in their pride have fled from the first level relationship with the governing authorities and are walking the way of sure 
you listen to, you watch the news, or TV or wherever, or listen to radio, you will wonder whether there is any order in this country. Probably the president has become so small. Somebody else to pick some. Are we, are we, are we there? Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Number three. We see that in Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. And First Peter. First Peter 3, 1 to 6. I will want to look at First Peter. You know, when you are here, you, you forget even how to open the Bible that you open very easily. But that's part of it. But uh, that's part of it, but we will get there. First Peter 3, I want to read one. Wives, likewise, I think this something is being addressed before. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. That even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of, the conduct of their wives. Let me repeat that one. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. That even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Wives in the house. Wives in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Wow. But uh, I'm sorry, it's not so. The wives in their pride have fled from their first relationship with their own husbands and are walking the way of sure. Wives in their pride, probably you bring in a little more money. Or, or me, I even don't work. Or, 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 okay. Let's go to the last relationship because also time is moving. The relationship now, slaves, mistresses, masters relationship. This is now where we are talking of, we are not, I'm not seeing every, any of us are slaves, but now we are talking of employee, employer relationship. So bishop, for you, you may now, you may be wearing very many hats. You are an employee of some people here. But now I'm going to speak to them on your behalf. Because you, you cannot. You are the father. But now allow me to do that. So now, the employer, employee relationship, which comes from slaves, mistress, masters relationship. And uh, then we will also read First Peter First Peter 2.18. Servants, and in this case now employees. Be submissive to your own masters, and masters now employers, with all fear, for not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. Employees. You know, I'm also an employee. So I'm also speaking to, my, to myself. We are being told to be submissive to our, our employers. So those of us who get the paycheck from the church and we are not submissive, then that means something else. Now, employees in their pride have fled from their first labor relationship with their employers and are, and are walking the way of sure. That is a mystery. 
employees. I'm not, sorry, I'm not just talking about church employees. I'm talking about every employee. Okay? Many of us, I'm, I'm sure, we are employed someplace. And uh, they, we are not giving the service that is expected of us. So to the church, that definition of the church, that definition of the church, the, 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 the God of second hand chance is saying now, return on the first level basis to Jesus Christ, your place of submission and service. To the citizens, and we are all citizens, the God of second chance is saying, return on the first level basis to the governing authorities, your place of service, your place of submission and service. To the wives, and there could be more here, the God of second chance is saying, return on the first level basis to your own husbands, your place of submission and service. To the employees, the God of second chance is saying, return on the first level basis to your employers, your place of submission and service. When we look at Romans 13, 7, it summarizes kind of the service that is expected of, of us. And I will not go to that one because of time. That if you owe taxes, pay taxes. So if we owe taxes to the Kenya government, to see what wants to pay taxes. Today I'm saying pay what? Taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. And I want to add a few more to, to, to the ones of Paul. If you owe somebody love, give love. If you owe somebody fellowship, give fellowship. If you owe somebody forgiveness, please forgive. In fact, you can start forgiving even this second. If hospitality, if you owe anybody hospitality, please do that. If worship, this one I want to tie it. This is, this is a close chapter. If worship, then to God the Father in spirit and truth. Worship, I'm not giving it to you to do. God will not even allow me to come out of this pulpit. If offerings, a few times the bishop have come here and even forgotten to give my offering. So, because the, 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 the box at times is removed from us. But we are being told, if we owe, owe offerings, then what? Give offerings. If you owe tithes, it's not giving now. It's what? Pay tithe. If you owe vows, as we are fond of saying that you make just a vow, then you think that now you can go and believe God. So if he doesn't give you, then you just sit down and you say, that is it. That is a, the biggest sin if you read Ecclesiastes 11, 5, 1 to 7. In fact, that is one of the categories of people the Bible calls fools. People who don't pay, who don't pay their vows, the Bible calls them fools. Because of time, I will not read that. When we go to Genesis 16, 13, where we read, and in particular through the statement, have I also here seen him who sees me? Have I here also seen him who sees me? Rak, uh, Hagar repented of her sin of pride or rebellion and returned on first level basis to Sarai, her mistress, her place of submission and service. You know, why God wanted me to use the first level, it's like she had entered into a second level, a second level relationship. That second level relationship was never recognized in heaven. The, the relationship between Hagar and, uh, and Abraham was never recognized in heaven. When the angel came down, even Sarah herself refers to Hagar as 
my mistress or my maid. Abraham the same. Even the angel knew. So it means he had been registered in heaven. So when she was told to go back, she was never told to go back to Abraham. She was only told to go back to Sarai. And as she went back, actually it was speaking about restoration. Restoration. Because she tapped into three promises. And I will finish with that because I also came to declare those three into us today. One promise she tapped into was the promise of multiplication of her descendants. I don't want to go and ask how many there are. Uh, there are very many. The promise of bearing a son and this spoke to inheritance. So we shall be tackling the issue of multiplication, number one, and the issue of inheritance. Three, the promise of the son dwelling in the presence of all his brethren. And this spoke to the planting of the Lord. When you are looking at Isaiah 60 verse 3, and, and, and uh, you know, Isaiah 61 verse 3 and Amos 9 15, the, the people of God are the plant, they are planted by God. They are established by God. So you as the church, you as the citizen, you as the wife, you as the employee, repent of your pride, rebellion. Of course, when you say you, I'm also inside you. But now I'm just saying you. Your pride, rebellion, and return on the first level basis to your respective place of submission and service. And three things are going to happen. One, you will walk into your season of multiplication. Your season of abundance. So I came to declare that a season of abundance, a season of multiplication is at hand. Amen? It's in your hands now. Two, the issue of inheritance. When I looked at Joshua 11.23, Joshua 14.13, inheritance is given. So it is possible, probably there are some people who are sitting on what is supposed to be yours. Because you have fled. Today I'm charging you to go back. If it is your home, go back. That inheritance is yours. So I came to speak, to release inheritance into your hands in Jesus' name. And then when you hear that you will dwell in the, pres you will dwell in the presence of, 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 of his brethren, that's speaking about the planting of God. That speaks about establishment. I also came to release that for you to be established in your business to be established on that inheritance to be established wherever you go be established those who will be established in this country those who will be established outside this country you are now released to go and be established Joel 2.25 says so I will restore to you the ears that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army, which I sent among you. What caught my eye was my great army. And God has great armies, and he releases them to destroy. Is COVID pandemic the great army of God? Yes. COVID-19 pandemic is a great army of God. But remember, God is has said, I will restore 
I will what? Restore to you the years COVID-19 pandemic has eaten. God is saying he will restore to you. He will restore. He will restore. He will restore. Therefore, I decree that the time of restoration is at hand in Jesus' name. The times of refreshing is at hand in Jesus' name. Therefore, arise and tap into restoration in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are God and we have spoken your word and it's you, God, who will follow it to fulfill. Your people have heard. You know where, which things have been eaten, which things have been swallowed, which things have been buried, but you are promising that you are going to restore the ears, the kanga worms, whatever kanga worms had eaten, you are going to restore and put everything in their hands. We thank you today. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.